Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total protonic reversal. Protonic reversal. Protonic reversal. With your host, Conan Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret. Confidence of a hero or a fool? I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. That's like a science thing, right? Indeed, indeed, indeed it is. It's a science thing. It's a science place. It is a scientific fact. They are all up in your face. It is time once again for the one, the only, Protonic Reversal. Welcome to it. Welcome to it. And additionally, welcome to it. And tonight's special episode, uh, Mr. Nick Sakes. Dazzling Killman, Sick Bay, Colossomite, Upright Forms, uh, lots of uh, Upright form stuff. Great band, really uh, psyched to have them on. Psyched to talk about some Face of Collapse. Uh, all, you know, all sorts of good stuff along those lines. A uh, little bit of a lag from uh, last episode, but uh, happy to be back. <clears throat> I'm just gonna go through run this run this spiel here for you. Welcome to Conan Neutron's Protonic Reversal. I'm your host, Kona Neutron. I'm a rock and roll lifer who has toured and recorded for over 22 years, most known for the band Kona Neutron and the Secret Friends. Music is a huge part of my life, and I use the format of this very long-running podcast to talk about music with musicians whose work I enjoy and respect. Folks that may or may not be household names would do something very special. This is episode 307. No, that's not true. I didn't update this. 310. If this is your first time listening to the show, all the archives are protonkaversal.com and are always free. No ads, no sponsors, no kidding. And uh, if you like the sports show, get episodes sooner. You can give $1 a month to patreon.com slash Reversal. And if you like the show or even just a single episode, please feel free to share it along, like, subscribe, post a review. All that helps people find the show, and it's just a darn nice thing to do. All right. So let's get down to it. Let's talk to uh, let's talk to Nick Sakes here. We'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll run his uh, his walk on theme now. I think it's like a I'm I'm a real American or something along. I, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, that would be. Oh my God, that's so weird that you said that. Like Conan and I were talking about walk on themes earlier, right before we were getting everything set up, and it got me thinking. Are we the kind of band we being upright forms that would use one and what? qualifies a band what is a type of band that would have one but you just said we are a real american and i sent <laughs> that hulk hogan gif to four different people yesterday you know, really i like, got the, the red white and blue guitar like yeah oh my god i love that my hand to god i that happened that's <laughs> psychic so we're just cy- cyclic link I re- yeah i'm remembering memories from the future man <laughs> yeah. yeah so i don't know uh if we if uh, if any if anyone's got any good walk on music ideas for us I, I'm, hit, hit us I in the chat open. hit us in the chat for your uh yeah. your, your favorite walk on music for upright although music. i think we just did it Cole <laughs> Cole is, i'm a <laughs> real american there's that's pretty great. hard to pop i gotta say yeah that's that's like a it's actually part. done don't bother chatting it's finished <laughs> We get we get things done today. It's it's that well. That's off the list. Done. First four seconds. Done. Great show, everybody. Yep. Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Wrapping it up. <laughs> uh, Nick, Nick, it's a pleasure to have you on. Uh, Thanks. Walk- Thanks for having me. I think our Brett Forms is great. I was lucky enough to see what what I believe is your first show. Right? Was that was it? That- was very. We are we are a very new band. We are uh, about ten months old, and we played three shows, and we have recorded some songs at the Minnehaha Recording Company. I'm wearing their yeah, shirt. Um, and yeah, we're, we've, we've kind of hit the ground running and we're on this 
skin graft compilation called Sounds to Make You Shudder. It's a kind of wonderful variety of, of people on it. I, why don't I have one sitting here that I can hold up? <laughs> It's because you're talking about walk on music as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but that's that's been amazing. That's that, uh, that's a so really far. good comp. And that's uh of course I was in the I'm just gonna date myself here. I was in the skin graft Yahoo groups. I think there's an e group. I was wondering if you were gonna bring that up, <laughs> Mr. Replicator. Yeah, <laughs> that I, was, I uh, meant that's what I was wondering if we were, we were gonna go back to the origins of yeah. Conan and Nick, which was the skin graph yahoo group and god what year would that have been like 2002 2001 yeah, i was gonna say it's probably about 20 years ago i mean first of all yahoo anyone remember yeah. yahoo yahoo group <laughs> that was my god that was our yeah. facebook that's twitter to us yahoo groups so for the younger Amazing. listeners there was this thing called yahoo and then there were these things <laughs> called email first. groups yeah <laughs> it was like tiktok but with text oh man it, it was it, it still packed a wall up you know weasel walter was on there and mark fisher mm -hmm. you um john uh, from microwaves uh john roman um, um, That's how I know him. Ro yeah john roman who the heck else oh uh, uh velcro lewis velcro lewis yeah velcro lewis it was a it was a wild crew yeah um yeah we lit it up back in back 20 years ago on the <laughs> Yahoo groups. It was well, and, nuts. And in what I always liked about it is that skin graft was such a unique kind of world. Like it was sort of like a, a just like a, of, of all the ones that were a bunch of freaks, nerds and weirdos. Like that was like kind of like the freakiest, nerdiest weirdo one, uh, which and I say that as a contributing member. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm good. I'm glad you felt at home. And, uh, you know, that's something that uh, you've got long ties with those guys. You've oh, yeah. Long history. We were their first record, that we being Deslin Kilman. Uh, and I knew them when they were comic dudes, you know, at selling their co little comic books at shows out in West County in St. Louis. And uh, they had this idea of doing, you know, I remember they, Rob and Mark came up to us and said, you know those things in the kid when you got like a like a comic book and you and you could read along and there was a record in it and like we want to do that you know we want right. to would you guys be interested in doing a split seven inch with we're not sure who yet uh, yeah of course we didn't have a record out and and that that was it we did it and it was that killing oh, fever yeah. thing and it ended up being with. I'm not quite sure how this happened. It ended up being with a Minneapolis band called Mother's Day that we didn't know. Uh, we, they did it with another guy um, who was friends with Mother's Day. They sort of put both their funds together and, and did this seven inch. So Skin Graft was actually part of a collaborative for their first record. But I don't know. Is this do people like when I go out and <laughs> off into the weeds and talk about this junk? People love I'm, I can go way out in the weeds. So like, where, where, where is he? What's he talking about? Yeah, people yeah love but I, I, that's, we actually played with him in Minneapolis. I live in St. Paul right now. And, and we played with, with Mother's Day. And the bass player had a bass made out of a big uh, boat or, they were cool. <laughs> they were a very, very cool band. All right. um, currently residing in the Where Are They Now file, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of uh, there's there's a lot of folks like that from back in the day, but every once in a while people pop back up, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that was the origin. That God, that was probably 1990, 91, maybe 91. I think we played our very first show on Elvis's birthday. I do remember that 1990 in St. Louis. It was I do remember it was Elvis's birthday. Uh, that that's awesome, and cool. so so the since so the skin graft guys were there kind of like pretty pretty early on. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I knew them. I knew I, they were acquaintances of mine, like just from punk shows and stuff. I I would occasionally promote a hardcore show in town. You know, it wasn't something I did regularly. I probably did about four or five, but I knew I knew them. They were they were around. Um, 
did you feel like uh did you have it so, so first of all did you have other bands before dazzling kilman nope picked up a guitar at age 26 that's my claim to fame <laughs> Wait, i'm so a late were, bloomer where were you uh were you a music fan before then but you just oh yeah that? yes definitely um well here goes the the setup on how i how i started playing music i i it's gonna sound like a name drop fest here i mean i lived in wood river i i I lived in wood river illinois which is sort of a a suburb like eh, calling it a suburb to stretch it's on the east side of st louis um and it's sort of neighboring a town called belleville illinois who i eventually met and started to hang out with the guys in Uncle Tupelo, Jeff Tweedy, Jay Farrar, Mike Heidorn. And I'd go drink with them and hang out and go to shows with them. And just, we were friends. And I, I, you know, I love them. I, I set up their very first show. I mean, I, I, cause I hung out with them before they were Uncle Tupelo. I, so I, I was always around them and my friend, Darren, Darren Gray had a band called Culture Shock. They were kind of gothy punk and they would play basement church shows in Alton, Illinois. And I I was just fascinated with that. And I I befriended these people and I went to shows with them, went in their vans, saw how, kind of saw how it was done. You know, like they were my models of how like, oh, this is how you are in a band. You have, I, I went to the music store and while they bought stuff and, rode with them to shows out of town and lifted their gear with them. And, and like, you know, only it just seemed to me like, well, I'm the mysteries is not a mystery anymore. I got, I, I really, I have to do this. I want to do this. Yeah. And, uh, why not? Why wouldn't you want to? And, yeah. It, and it, another, honestly, the, the other inspiring thing was, is there were so many of my favorite, regional bands coming to town and the same like two or three sort of pop punk local bands were opening for bands like ah, Helmet right. and Jesus yeah. Lizard. And it was like, God damn it. I, I know I can do this. I know it. It was just driving me insane. So, I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was really that it was like, I kind of, you know, I got some money together and, bought a guitar and Darren showed me how to play bar chords and we started writing songs and then pretty soon, well, we're in a band, you know, it's, it's a band. And he had this friend Blake who he went to school with and was a jazz drummer and brought him in and pff, here we are. I mean, it, it worked. And then Tim, another friend of theirs from school, Tim Garrigan, that would play with them in jazz combos at school. They're like, oh, we should get Tim in too. So Tim joined, and uh, we we all got together, and that's that's kind of how that started. And it was not, you know, me playing in a thousand cover bands when I was a teenager or anything like that. It was all very like sudden and kind of poop pooped out. You know, I was about twenty six. Did you fi- did you find that? you already kind of had ideas for musically what you wanted to do without necessarily having initially the yeah musical skill to, to, to pull yeah, it out. Definitely like noisy, scrapey guitar bellowing kind of stuff, you know, birthday yeah. party, kill dozer, yeah. uh, scratch acid, you know, butthole surfers. I mean, it was classic noise rock stuff. I mean, but we just worked around my uh, my sort of outsidery tendencies, you know. I I couldn't really play that well, still can't. And um, but I was surrounded by like these virtual virtual virtuosity people, and uh, you know, and, and like most, I, I don't know how how your band goes, but I think and I've heard this said that most bands will write a bunch of songs. And then it becomes like, well, who's, are we going to have a singer? 
who, who wants to <laughs> later play? on you'll figure it and out yeah. like, and then it gets real quiet you know you can the crickets you know like I well i guess i will <laughs> cool you're a singer now you know and it it kind of was that way but I, I i i quickly embraced it you know i, I sort of became like you know, it was what I could add to it, you know, being surrounded by my friends who are also happen to be incredible musicians. Technically, I felt like, well, I had to be sort of the, you know, the comic relief or something, you know, the wild man. <laughs> or, or, yeah, like the know. X Factor, if you will. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the intangible. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, you know, and that's something where that that, is often done to great effect. And, uh, you know, I dare say that I uh, cer certainly had in the early days of Daz and Kilman um, that it, 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 cause I think it can work really well when you have, when you're someone that has vision, but you don't necessarily have like the lexicon to quite mm -hmm. pull it off. Like it actually it can be very fascinating. I've yeah. I've read interviews with a lot of people that, that, um, Heck, I even read an interview pretty recently with Lee Ronaldo talking about a, a record that, that he recently did. And he's talking about vocals. And he's and he's like when he writes vocals, he'll do what he called yabba dabba doing. Like he'll just sort of make <laughs> up make up words. Yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. sound like you know, like that. And pretty like soon that, yeah. they start to like, well, I'm saying rip rib top you know something they be, they start to become kind of a weird poetry and i i'm like yeah that's kind of what i did too or i would just be at work and write down a phrase i would hear that sounded weird and i would just kind of stretch it out or make it fit into a song you know it's just there was no um no learned process involved at all it was well, kind of outsidery but like also, I mean, there's a long tradition of that. I mean, look at like the end theme to WKRP, right? Which has no actual words. It's just like all like inflection. Oh. Basically that. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the in the, the in theme song. It's I, oh I my love God. It. I was actually talking about that show two days ago and my coworkers. He, he put up a fake wall and it's like, like Les Nessman and his walls in his office and zero people got it except the wall. Uh, there hasn't, there hasn't been like, yeah, I know what you're talking about, but they don't I'm like, yeah, okay. All That's right. <laughs> so we're having weird psychic breaks over here. Like WKRP and, um, walk on. Walk well, on and music. So the composer of that in theme, uh, just like, wanted a rock and roll sounding song but like couldn't be bothered to like write words for it so we just made a bunch of nonsense words and that oh, hell yeah. the theme of the of the show uh and then a, another good example is like uh you know i mean iggy pop would do that in the stooges like there, there's a long tradition of it oh yeah and then the i mean everyone loves going off on on what you thought the guy the person said like there's a bathroom lyrics. Water, right? yeah yeah i mean <laughs> More than a feeling is born on a river. Um, <laughs> a friend of mine uh, used to, when he was a kid, used to think. Speaking of Steve Miller, used to think, used to think that jet airliner. When he would say "big old jet airliner," mm -hmm. he thought it was Bingo, Chet, and Lionel, which were three <laughs> do three dogs that would carry him on like adventures, but not too far away. <laughs> Don't carry me too far away. Right, right, so right. I'm like you can build this incredible world. Like don't don't tell the kid it's he's seeing big jet airliner. It'll ruin it. You know, I I love that. I think that's a bit huge plus. Like I'm not gonna. There's a song we have where I, I say <laughs> grief kicking in the shadows, and some friends of mine is like, what are you saying? Like. Uh, grease chicken or something. It's like, yeah, I said I'm saying something about chicken. Like whatever you want it to be, that's always cool. food. It's always it's, food. It's good. It's, it's good. delicious fried chicken in the shadows. It's always you know. <laughs> then you, you know, it makes it prime better. place to eat fried chicken. As it turns that's out. the only way to eat fried chicken is in the shadows. Uh, by yourself. That's amazing. Yeah, I found when people mishear lyrics, uh, they almost always tend to be about food. 
is this is really my, yeah I, I don't know. Notice that. and i'm like i guarantee you i'm not writing that many songs about food ever <laughs> uh, but yeah i mean there, there's a long there's a long tradition of i mean i <coughs> i thought uh before i knew the name of the song was dirty deeds done dirt cheap yeah uh, it was dirty deeds and the dunder chi which i assume yes. is a australian <laughs> mystical animal of some kind Dude, and, dirty deeds like, and the dunder chi yeah it's like what's a dunder chi oh it man sounds, it is. sounds uh very um what am I? A very Edward Gorey somehow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had I to look up at my poster. Like, what's that guy? And Ashley Crumb Tiny. <laughs> oh yeah, Edward Gorey. Yeah. The, I, 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 and for you, and then someone's like, "Oh, do you mean Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap?" And it's like, "Oh, like, oh, yes, yeah, I, I do." Wow. <laughs> but if you wow. only ever hear it on the radio, you don't know. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Is that one of those songs they can get away with putting curse words in? Kind of like the. We won't get fooled again, or or you, Rolling Stones. Like I was listening, to that. you make a dad man come. Like how can they put that in the fucking radio? Do they not? Do they not? And he repeats it like three times in the yeah. song. Like yeah, exactly. I guess you're Mick Jagger. Whatever you can say, literally those words very clearly. Like yeah, go ahead. Take no ambiguity of care. any kind. <laughs> uh, all right so but you you get the um I, I think it's a story off and it's like okay i guess you're singing like you know that 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 kind uh, yeah of i became the singer um and uh it, but it, but we never incorporated we again being dazzling killman incorporated vocals initially when writing a song it was always the last thing to, right to come on to the scene and I'm trying to, I'm trying not to do that. I mean, I, I always, I want to, I want to do some yabba dabba doing initially, like pretty much right off the bat, at least, right. at least have pretend, pretend English words. But um, yeah, there was many times where we'd get to the studio and uh, somebody would be like, Hey man, are you going to, what are you going to sing on this song? <laughs> you don't know. because I got, I got it. Like, I didn't really have it much. You know, I had some words written down. But I'm like, yeah. oh, it was it was like a nightmare. It's like showing up to your final exam and you forgot to go to class all year. You know, <laughs> they had that terrifying feeling like, yeah. man, I better craft something out pretty cool. But I actually kind of, I, I don't know. I always surprised myself and. I don't know. I think I did okay. When, well, yeah. I mean, there's no right or wrong. You know, it's like that's what I did. Precisely. And, and I think like also it's something where you can almost get Dada-esque with it and then like, you know, mm -hmm. kind of not, you can almost get into their, their collective unconsciousness and whatnot, right? Too. Yeah. Like, I, I did a lot of those lyrics on Face of Collapse. I had never even sang those songs in practice, a lot of them. And, um, did a lot of them on the first take. I'm not. That's not some sort of brag. It's just kind of like no, no. It's just a statement of fact. Weird. I mean. It was just. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Um. But the the song those songs with the the tight, intricate, precision, to me, I th first maybe I've ever thought about this. Maybe back then I thought well. I can be a little bit nutty and, and loose with the words because everything else is just so like tight, just strict. Yeah. You know, I, can, I, mean, I can be a little bit like off kilter. I think it would and it enhance it that way. So it didn't well, it worry me a whole lot. Not too, like, you know, I love it, but like not too King Crimson or something. Right. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. That, element, that X factor, that element of danger. that. Mm -hmm. that and to, to be clear, when I say that, I love King Crimson. But, oh, I do too. Yeah, but uh, it's it it sounds different, right? It hits differently because it's, mm -hmm. it's you got again this, this unpredictable element to it. Uh, yeah. Did you find? Did you find like that uh, as you kind of learned more of what it is that you do with guitar and and songwriting and whatnot? Were you able to sort of get get your get your ideas across uh more quickly just because you kind of had a more articulated version of where you wanted to go because you started like not like 12 but in your 20s instead yeah yeah i um 
Um, I, I really wish though I would have, have learned more notes on like, hey, I'm really, I still struggle with like, you know, if someone said this song's in G, I, I really wouldn't know what that meant. I really, really wouldn't know what to do. And they, or I know the open chords on the guitar, like, you know, down by the nut. Those are, but, but when like, well, yeah, play, play the bar chord version of the A, like up on the neck, like I kind of can't do that. I know I'm admitting that, but it's true. I really, I mean, I just write riffs and kind of, you know, I get a pulse going and just write, just start making random patterns. And, uh, but man, it's kind of hard to, it's, it, I get in trouble sometimes because I don't, I don't write them down. I don't write down the fingerings I make up. Oh, uh, no. so, so you're making I, some cool, crazy chord. Yeah, I have no idea. And like, it's like Tim, Tim and Dazzling Kilman or, or Ed and Colossomite. They're like, oh, I like what you're doing with that. That like, I, I can't even pretend like I'm I'm joking about music talk. But like, your augmented ninth on that's like, what? I did a what now? You know, things like, like I put my fat fingers on that one little string and the other on the big one, and it kind of sounded warbly and cool. Yeah, yeah that's, that's all I got. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's hard to communicate. Like, if I have a riff, and God help us, when we got these phones and their video, how many of us have, like, the new shoebox full of cassette tapes is a, a video memo with like the date like do you have that there's new, like new, riff. New, new riff idea number yeah, seven new riff idea <laughs> was that new riff idea 2a uh, and like no, i don't know shit oh well and it's it, so there's that you give it a clever also, name and you're like i don't know what that even means. i know yes <laughs> and guess what that clever name just like well we got to call it something call it uh randy riff and like pretty soon that's the fucking name of the song, the name of the song then, stuck yeah. with it and then you gotta write lyrics that kind of like well i don't know if i can make anything up to <laughs> go with this ridiculous title i just pulled out of my ass because we had to call it something other than monday riff you know <laughs> It's right, exactly. that is, that's the modern problem of being in a band. That's some modern shit that I we definitely did the boombox tapes, you know, yeah. and with the date on them. And um, I've got I, I think I threw them away eventually. I just moved so many times. I just like, ah, OK, bye. And I just pitched them. But I had so many of those tapes. That's why I've uh, become a song title collector too. Like I've come with something like, oh, that'd be a cool song title. I'll write it down Ooh. immediately. Because if I don't write it down immediately, it's gone. Yeah. It's gone yeah. within a minute. But if something's like, oh, that's a good turn of phrase or something. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I got I got those. And I I can kind of – I don't know if you find it's like this. When you, when you decide like, okay, I need to like turn on the radar for those things, I'll, I'll consciously like, okay – I'm going to start writing. I do the same thing. I'm going to start writing down stuff I hear out in the world or, or things that pop into my head. And all of a sudden they just sort of like this come out of the woodwork. They're like, Oh my God, what is all this stuff? I don't even, hadn't even noticed before. It's really kind of fun. And probably I'll probably start doing it after this interview, but I, I love doing that stuff. That's always amazing. You just get that, get the, get the flow going and like it's just the world just kind of opens up and it starts giving you stuff yeah you hear so, these incredible uh, phrases just like overheard at like the bus stop or something like Whoa. yeah <laughs> that's amazing or, or like even like, from movies or or podcasts you know <laughs> my my dad uh perfect example my dad always hears things as kind of funnier than they are like <laughs> like he lost a lot of hearing in the 80s but like He's a very he's a very clever man. Like you, know, you wrote lots of poetry and stuff like back in the day. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, went and saw lots of rock and roll shows, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but yeah, he'll always hear things as like way funnier than they are. And oh and yeah, my mom too. Same and he used deal. to annoy the living hell out of me, like when I was a kid. But now I'm like, all right, same title, you know. <laughs> I, 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 my hearing ain't what it used to be, and um, you know, my girlfriend will will say something in the next room, and I will repeat to her loudly what I thought she said. And it's some ridiculous, uh, 
Dada-esque yeah, absurdity. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, no, I said, have you seen my glasses? You know, right. or uh, uh, God knows what I heard, but those are the gems. Those, those are all the lyrics are coming from, dang it. <laughs> Misheard real life stuff. That's what I want to do. That's a, it's a, I have a theme for an album. These put a note, like all these lyrics are misheard found found <laughs> phrases you know, found like phrases a, instead of found footage yeah yeah like instead of found objects just like these are all found phrases i like this we're writing our next album right now Conan. there you Good go give you credit <laughs> congrats uh, i i i, I want to talk about it by forms i since we're already talking about Killman, can you tell me a little about dig out the switch uh about that, that first record that, that oh my record. goodness yeah that one was a doozy um I can. I think the most uh, interesting part I thought uh, was back then. Oh man, it's so weird how everything's thirty years ago to me. I, I'm turning. <laughs> I'm turning fifty nine in a couple yeah. of months, and everything is like, like oh, that was that's like ten years. Like no, well, dude, that, that was, was twenty eight years ago. Like Long what? Time ago. what? <laughs> twenty? How? Ninety? Yeah, it's more than 30 years oh, ago now. So no. anyway, <laughs> back then, there weren't re people that could record your band, like literally within a 100-yard radius of wherever you live now. It's like, it's oh, easy. yeah, he's got a Pro Tools studio. That guy's got, like, back then it was, you know, the ponytail dude that recorded <laughs> – the guy's cousin's band that you worked with, you know, that was your choice or, or there back then there to me, I had heard about, and I love the way Bush Vig's records sound mm -hmm. sounded. Oh, yeah. So it started to be like, how, how do we, like he lives in Madison. How do we get there? And, um, and so, we had these songs like we got to record these and we got we we got this guy in france uh that wants to do an album with us he read a review in maximum rock and roll and said he wanted to do and this label was called intellectual convulsion and they also did the first i hate god album oh, and, sure. they did a, and they did a misery album like a, a d beat sort of crust band from minneapolis so we had this opportunity he was going to pay for it so I was already friends with David Yao. I called David on the phone to try to get Butch Vig's phone number. Because back then, you got, what's his number? You just called him, called somebody. Right. <laughs> that's, so that's right. exactly I, that's right. I called David Yao on the telephone in 1990 or whatever, because I promoted a Crest Scratch Acid show in the 80s, and I got to be friends with him. And he's like, well, why don't you have Steve do it? Like who Steve Albini? Like, oh yeah, he did that poster children record and yep. okay. And he's like, Yeah, he's great, he's cheap, and he's doing right. I think he was working on Steve's house at the time. So, like, yeah, okay, let's do that. I and mean, that was literally how we met Steve Albini. I knew I knew Big Black. I mean, I was a huge yeah. fan already. I knew <laughs> and I knew about him, but it's just funny of those of the people that Literally, that I could, I didn't know of anyone else that recorded bands like within a day's drive of St. Louis, Butch Vig and, and Albini. That was it. So, so guess we're going to go up and hang out and record with, with Albini. So we called him. Yeah. Okay. It was real fast. Like, yeah. Okay. We'll do it. And he was already pretty booked. He'd had a studio at his house. And we had to wait. It was a while. Like, six months to get in there we'd already we were just just practiced so much over and over those songs so we were a little bit defeated like oh my god six more months okay and then we get like five months down the road and he calls us and he said i'm gonna have to bump you guys like i can do it i think it was something crazy like another six months or another eight months because I'm recording this per this person, PJ Harvey, and I'm going. I'm going to be out of the country. I I never heard of PJ. No one. It was back when. Who the fuck is PJ Harvey? And why is she bumping us? God damn it! 
ah, so it was, you know who it was I madness. Am. It was like, I don't know. I didn't, she had no I, name I, back then. I, she I, was exactly, like, this exactly. was like 1990. I don't, I, maybe she did. I, none of us had ever heard of her. To, to be explicitly so, clear, that was a joke. Nobody knew who she was at the time, especially in the U.S. For sure. <laughs> but he was recording her, and so we waited and practiced and practiced and practiced until the the day. Literally, one he he was he was so confident. We didn't need one day to track, mix, and master that album. One day. So we went, okay. So we went up there and did it and like set up. And the day before we recorded, Blake, the drummer's grandpa died, who he was very ah. close with. So he was a wreck. Yeah. We we got to his house, Steve's house, first time ever, like seven in the morning or something. We drove all night. It was so we were not in any frame of mind to record that album but we had to it was like this was look how long we waited for a day one stinking day to do it all so we set up in his basement and it was kind of a long hallway it had kind of a dead room where the bass bass guitar regular guitar were in a line and out in his basement on the concrete floor that's where the drums set up so it was it was you know headphones and he was up in the attic and talking to us on the headphones, you know, poor Blake's having crying spells, completely sad. And, and they're like, here it is. This is where we got to, we got to rise to the occasion and get this album recorded. And, oh, by the way, Jeff Tweedy was there helping us too. Um, Cause he was our pal and they were big, big fans of our band, by the way, uncle Scoopolo. They were very encouraging, those guys, and we got to play with them a few times. Um, but he was there upstairs with Steve. They never, they didn't even know each other back then. I think that was when they first met. Uh, and so we somehow got through it. I, I we didn't, we didn't really, weren't really happy about the takes we did, but we didn't like. Oh well, that's that's what we get. Yeah. So we plowed through it and. Uh, <laughs> I shouldn't even say this stuff. So we f fucking finished it at like midnight or something and got the cassette. Like, here it is. There's Dig Out the Switch. <laughs> got in the van, had everything loaded. We're driving back to St. Louis like in the middle of the night. I don't know why. I guess we popped it in the boom box and we're driving along. You, you think that's like the, the moment of ecstasy. Like, yeah, like all oh, right. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Smell the glove is here. You know, it's, this is going to be, <laughs> this is going to kick ass. Yeah. And we just, Darren, I remember Blake was in the back, like sleeping and because his life was crushed by death and tragedy. And I remember Darren and I looking at each other, shaking our heads, going like, oh, my God. And took this, I think he or I took the cassette out of the boom box and just chucked it out the window. We're like, wow, that's horrible. So we were not real happy with it. Wow. It wasn't. So that's the story of how we recorded Dig Out the Switch. It wasn't. We're. It, but you know, in hindsight, it sounds kind of cool. I don't yeah, know. I mean, it's that, it's not a bad record at all. I mean, I think every not, but the conditions were were hilariously stupid. Yeah, it sounds like there was a lot of didn't know. know we didn't know a lot, lot of things to overcome there. <laughs> I mean, I think you know, I think, but I think if in general people go to Kilman, they're probably going to go to face a collapse though. Uh, yeah, we kind of had our stuff together a little bit better. Although we've talked about re-release and dig out the switch and possibly remixing it that hasn't uh, happened yet i'm not saying it won't happen but it, it there's been several attempts and always hits some sort of snag uh i think face of collapse is a very is a very interesting record because it's very for me very clearly coming from like the you know the more noisy like noise rock sort of place but there's elements of like what people started calling like math rock 
there you know there's like math metal like uh, you know prog mm-hmm. whatever like whatever kind of uh i used to work at a record store and there were so many sub derivations of sub genres with dashes especially oh. around that time oh, yeah. <laughs> what about jazz nobody uses jazz core anymore i think that's jazz actually core. fairly apt in that case i don't know they, they were they were sure jazz freaks they those three guys i yeah i was, yeah. Not, I was not the jazz guy but i like the hardcore that's what we all sort of did but there was i i i get you you know it the math the math rock was was a tag that we always dealt with that we somehow poo pooed <laughs> yeah dealt with is the correct and, term. Uh, <laughs> it, you know what's funny one band wherever we go and we started to notice it there'd be some guy walk up walk up to us after the show and he goes like hey man you ever heard of victim's family like, they, <laughs> like and we're like what Victims fan, like everyone thought yeah. we sounded like Victims Family, and we were That's like, really funny. I guess <laughs> I don't know. I think they had an album on Alternative Tentacles or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're they're from uh, they're, they're from my neck of the woods. They're from the Bay Area. Yeah, they we got that. Yeah. It became kind of a not really a joke, but like we didn't dislike them, but, but we're like, I, all right, cool, you know. Yeah. yeah. And we didn't listen to a particularly lot of King Crimson, but we definitely, and I can see that King Crimson. Yeah. It was yeah. sort of that, that, that feeling. But, it's like King Crimson, but played like minor threat or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you have like some propulsiveness. Too. Yeah. I mean, I was always, I, that's so funny. I was just talking to somebody about, um, about this math stuff. And I, I thought, man, I don't know, math. Well, it, I kind of get the the term math rock, but what about bands that like those incredibly tight, complicated, structurally like hardcore bands like Bad Brains, The Accused, yeah, yeah. even Corrosion of Conformity, Animosity, um, and and back then, I mean, we listened to I listened to a lot of metal, like speed metal back when we called it speed metal, you know. And when when Rain and Blood came out. I mean that just destroyed our brains. I mean, like that that was like I don't know. I still to this freak, day I still get the chills listening to that album. It's like, how did they do this? That, that was ins- this. <laughs> so there there was stuff that I guess could be I don't know if you'd call all that stuff math rock, but it certainly is tight and it certainly has tempo changes and it certainly has has off kilter structures. Um but I always loved that stuff. I, I guess, I guess I was uh, looking into some sites recently that were dedicated to math rock, and it was very strange. Like all these bands, top fifty math rock bands. I'm like, I, it's, it didn't. I didn't. I felt like an unfrozen caveman band guy or something. <laughs> like what? What is this? You know, I'm going in with Phil Hartman. <laughs> I'm merely a caveman. I was in a band in the yeah. early '90s. I don't know what is this math well, rock. And it's also like you know, then there's all these like needless sub derivations. The thing I didn't like about math rock was that it it sounds like work. It sounds like it's like oh, that sounds like like work. I mean, I guess if you yeah, love nobody it, doesn't sound fun. It sounds fun at all. At all. And it's like a party. Oh, math rock. Oh, I'm sure that's gonna be great. No, but then it's like you hear a band like Drive Like Jehu. That band does not sound like work. That band, it's like, oh, this is fucking cool. This is like, yeah. Like, are they? Crazy are, do people think they're math rock? People, is that? I, mean, uh, I don't know what people think, man. Like, I, I'm just glad that we got over using that term because it's like, like, not that I don't have problems with noise rock. Don't get me wrong, but like as as a term, and I've recently like, grown to embrace that because it, I can kind of broad it. ranging. Like, because as long as you're like, well, that can include like you know everything from like Sonic Youth to Brainiac to like Unsane and you know like whatever it covers. You can a lot. use like discordant, ugly chords in a weird rhythm. You know, yeah. like it it can kind of sound. Yeah, it's noise. It's not thought out. Uh, music theory, I guess. I mean, I and I immediately think of AMRAP when I hear noise yeah. rock, or the term noise rock. And even them, like their bands didn't, they were pretty freaking melodic, most of them, if you ask me. Well, and, and so, you know, like whatever. In the, the genre, genre name is a genre name. And it, <coughs> I, I think most, most, like a lot of people that are like paragons of a genre would be like, oh, yeah, I, I hate when people call the band that, you know, it's like, oh, okay, well, 
That's what do you guys play? <laughs> what kind of music do y'all play? I just seen- of, you're like the guy at work. It's like <laughs> you're in a band. What what do you what do you guys play? What yeah. kind of music? Uh noise rock and it's like blank. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but- it, yeah, you can tell us like wow, that sounds like awful that you don't know what you're doing and usually shuts the conversation. Yeah, at least it stops the conversation. It's kind of a relief. It's a good it's a good conversation ender with the guy at work. But, like I, I used to go rock music, but like weird rock music. But then I learned just don't answer at all and like evade the question entirely, and then you'll be happier. Uh, at least but then you run the risk of being like, "Oh, Mr. Fancy can't describe his music." Well, <laughs> right. well, the well. last thing you want to do is like get there. Well, in. college boy. Well, it's, this is from outer space. So who knows what he's? Is it even music? You know. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's not wrong. It is weird rock music. I know, anyway. I know, I know. It's just fun. It's stuff we've all run into to this day. I mean, it's well, it's, okay. So, getting back to like face a collapse, right? Like, what? I mean, if if you were had to like elevator pitch that record, which sounds horrible, like yeah. I mean, it's there's elements of it that are kind of metal. It's not a metal record. There's I can see Prague. I can see elements of it. There, Prague. It's not a lot really of people a prog record. that are like Prague core or something uh yeah. it's influential i know that i know a lot of people uh, are like whoa hey that's crazy it definitely um i remember when we were done with that recording there we were we were a little bit taken aback like wow what did we just do it was yeah. really fun it was a, a big moment in my life i remember we went over to um to John Forbes's apartment um, with Mark, and we were like, "Okay, we're just going to listen to this new album and put it on." And, and I remember just being like, "Whoa, man, you guys are gonna, this is this shit turned out pretty good." I mean, I'm really really excited, and people were like, "Oh man, you guys did some something really special," and it it was incredible feeling, and that kind of. You know, I've been chasing that dragon for a while, but yeah, yeah, I but it was it. really um, like we didn't really kind of couldn't stand back and see the see it. Yeah, you're we in were, it. We were How in it, you? and yeah. it was really fun to have it done. And Steve did a great job on that record, and we took a, a luxurious three days on that record, <laughs> which really we were done like in two and a half. We were like, <laughs> we got all this time. You want to do anything else? Like, no, nah, I guess we're done. It was like Monday, Tuesday, and half of Wednesday. Like, oh yeah, there's what more can you do? I don't know how much more time a person needs to record an album. Two and a half days sounds plenty. <laughs> and then but, he came uh, away with that record too, which yeah, imagine. Yeah, I mean, I, um so i i don't know we didn't really have a, a, i think we were just all this, the collective of all our tastes put together somehow came out and I, you know i gotta hand it to those three guys i mean they they went to school together they went to music school together and they played in jazz combos at school like yeah. in the day all the time it wasn't i didn't we didn't we practiced a lot but i think really the way those three guys figured out how to communicate with each other was the kind of the more the most magic -y part of that of that band well it seems like they just had like that that synergy to overuse like a, a that term yeah well they could they could communicate verbally of like yeah. using notes and and so they're maybe i did admit they, they always told me don't don't look into music theory oh like like they didn't want to you know educate they didn't want to mess with my whatever crazy outsider -y caveman yeah. bullshit i had going on like with <laughs> with all their book fancy book learning so <laughs> I okay. Well, easy for easy for me. All right, yeah. great. Keep doing what you're doing. It's great. Yeah. Oh, cool, I I, will. <laughs> you, yeah, you do that. The, the sweaty, fat singing guy thing that yells. <laughs> yeah, people like that, and we'll do like the fancy stuff. Okay, great. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah, drive the van too. By the way, <laughs> we won't go into that. Well, but it's uh, you know, like it's, but that's a record that connected with a lot of people. You know, mm -hmm. I, I know you did that. Um, you did that uh, remaster edition uh, like five years ago or something. Oh yeah, which was that, really cool. 
that was yeah that was so cool was it was it a trip kind of going back and uh and that uh, that's a, that, that reissue has like the pop tones uh mm-hmm. on there right if i remember correctly like is the from, the so. inch, from some yeah. inch, i don't remember yep. <laughs> yeah that's it, that's yeah somebody oh sean the drummer for upright forms just out of the blue popped up and sent me a little graphic he was listening to pil's the original and i'd forgotten like that song was really that song was so simple i remember it being it such an easy song that we had trouble like not overplaying on like <laughs> There's, there's, that. it's like a, it's like, it, 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 it's like just like a nursery rhyme. It's so, yeah, it's so simple, but it's like otherworldly at the same time. Yeah, like, there's something like so crazy about it where it's like I couldn't even imagine. And we yeah. we had the we had the little uh, overdub of the <laughs> the L.A. Lakers basketball game. <laughs> Remember the announcers saying like inside the Pippin, yeah. like something that's on the record. Like, yeah, let's put some some radio crazy radio stuff on it but it was like <laughs> such was the style of the time know, like it was a basketball game yeah that, like, that is kind of weird i guess that fits i don't know i kind of came back cool. a little bit with mogwai uh you know in the even the later 90s and stuff too they, i'm they, not they, totally they, familiar with the mogwai i don't know what the, they got a lot of records at this point, but the two more popular ones they actually have. Like I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like a English football match going like while they're playing the song, which is this maybe I could think of something like that for the walk on. Like have like so a, you're back to the walk on music, yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so uh, Nate, go ahead. No, I was, I was, I was just gonna say before we before we leave on face to collapse. I mean, uh, where was the band at the, at the time? Like, uh, like psychically, like you know, as, as a band, like '94, like. Where whereabouts were you? Uh, well, I, I know that. Well, Tim and Darren were roommates. Like until I can tell you geographically and physically where they were. Um, <laughs> I guess I mean more. I, I mean we lived. We all lived in the same town. Um, and I, I was, I didn't. I don't know. We didn't do a whole lot of hanging out as friends it was always band band this business um i i was definitely the more like a drinker partier guy back then so i was always going to shows and kind of had my separate world um i'm not sure if that's what you're after like or like what you were curious about um musically i was probably listening to oh my gosh Back then, Dinosaur uh, Massacre. Do you ever hear that album? That Massacre album with Bill Bill for Bill Laswell and yeah. um, Fred Frith. Oh, I love uh, Fred Frith. That's crazy. Oh man, you got to check out this band they had called Massacre. The album is called Killing Time, and I'm sure they were. I mean, we would go on tour, and those guys would just bring out the plastic and buy so much jazz, like in every record yeah. store. They were like those. I, there was a little bit of a, I don't know, like uh, they were jazz guy. They were complete yeah. jazz heads, and I didn't really have any any connection with that at all. I didn't. It was okay. I still not a huge fan of jazz. Um, were you able to meet but, in the middle on like Naked City and stuff? Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, and. Uh, and Naked City and Casper Brodsman, maybe. And, um, oh, what am I trying to think of? Like some of the <coughs> New York <coughs> kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. I'm sorry I'm blanking out. I'm just coming off of COVID, by the way. No, no, that, that's, that's my fine. First, my first COVID. Yeah, yeah, congratulations. Yeah, yeah it's uh, <laughs> wonderful. Um, it's really great, yeah. Yeah, it actually kind of sucked. Um, um, but yeah, I don't know. We didn't, it, it was, well, and the reason why I ask is because, because when that record comes out, there's like what, another year or so that you guys were an active band before, before splitting up. So we, we, yeah, we got, we started getting in. Yeah. There was some, this, this harmony going yeah. on and we went out, we went to, we went out, uh, we went on this tour. We, we, we got a booking agent finally, a pretty good booking agent, uh, uh, that also booked Neurosis, Sleep, Zenny Kava, and 
uh, Unsane, and the, you know, pretty cool bands that we like loved. So we were out in California and played some shows with Sleep and Neurosis. And I don't know, we had just dysfunctional family stuff, you know, just those long, long Western drives. I, I don't know how people do it. Like, you know, like, okay, we're, we're in Denver. We have to get this. Our next show's in San Francisco, you know, things yeah. like that. It's, it's going to drive through multiple mountains. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's, an, it's an, <laughs> like a religious experience, but at the same time, it's like, seems like three days of just driving. Um, and I don't know. I think, I think, uh, you know, there were, we didn't communicate real well and resentments were building up and, I, I really don't want to go into what happened. No, no, we don't need to. We don't need but to. Like, yeah, we just be, it just became apparent that yeah. we can't. There was just too much, too much tension, and I I said I I'm the one like I can't do this anymore. So I, I you know I don't think any anyone else could either. But I there was there was a, an event that happened that what to me was the was it the ending, so. That's what happened. So when did you when did you start hooking up for with Colossum? <laughs> well, uh, after that ended, my 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 then partner, future wife, uh, met met up with some old friends up in Minneapolis and decided, "Fuck St. Louis, we're going to move to Minneapolis. It's similar size and it's has art and music and seems really fucking cool." And this St. Louis town was just turned into a big old dud so we just packed up and moved and uh at that time i was so burnt out like on music and playing like i'm not gonna do it anymore yeah and then of course you know about six months later like yeah turns out i am gonna do it anymore yeah, uh, well actually and and <laughs> and the, uh, i back then, I, I did what i i never thought i'd do i put an ad in the free paper in minneapolis that's and, and I, for the and younger read, listeners, that was how you used to find that's what you did. And I put an ad in the classifieds, and it said, <laughs> I was just throwing it out in the world. I said, X Dazzling Kilman seeks others, seeks others, just vague. I put Black Flag Devo, uh, Raymond Scott, Wire. That's it, those nice. four bands. Nice, Black Flag Devo, Raymond Scott, Wire. Like, if I wanted to, I that sounds like a really good band to me. And like guess who? I went to work and it came out. Guess who had left a message on my answering machine? Kids, those are what we used to have instead of texting. People would leave <laughs> on a cassette tape a message and we'd hear it when we got home from work. It was John Dietrich, who is now in Deerhoof. And uh, John had seen Dazzling Kilman in Madison, knew who I was. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And he was already friends with Ed and Chad and had a gorge trio with them and basically that I started playing with them and that was colossomite and it was uh again i felt a little bit like well i guess this is my my thing i'm i'm the the, the drooling sweaty fat guy <laughs> surrounded by virtuoso <laughs> well-trained well-honed cra craftsman and they're at their instruments and i'll i'll be the comic relief i'm not, i'm i'm being silly yeah, yeah. uh but anyway that's <laughs> so again it seemed like that it was sort of like this sort of mathy yeah i'm using the term because it's convenient um and they also were into kind of jazzy avant more avant stuff than I was. They, you know, there again, there was a little bit of like record store guy hangout uh, obsessed with, you know, they, they were people that I've never been this. They play their instruments from the minute they woke up to the minute they go to sleep. I think they're still like that. I think they're just always like, always playing. You know, yeah. It's always yeah. playing. And I, I mean, you can tell. I mean, my God, Deerhoof is like, the, they're incredible incredible guitar players and yeah and um i don't know that that ran its course it was a it was a fire that burned strong and blew out quick but we we made it to europe you know we did a european tour it was the first time i've ever done that 
Yeah, we got a couple EPs. There's that one that came with uh, the Frisbee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I remember. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we had an album, Economy of Motion. Economy of Motion. It's a good record. Yeah. <coughs> if I remember so, right, there was no bass player for that one. No, right? no yeah. bass player. And it was almost like that situation with the singer. It's like, well, I guess no one's going to want to play bass. <laughs> and uh, I, I'll try to hold down the fort, you know, with thicker strings and do like kind of the bigger, woofier sort of riffs. Which yeah. is cool. I know, big distorted blobby riffs. <laughs> and there would be the be the more like and I'm yeah. more the I'm more like whoa 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 whoa. <laughs> They're more meatily meatily in your They're more like meatly meatly. I'm like whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that <laughs> is how I describe music. That and when you sing and go, oh, song, you go, yeah, yeah, you do your yabadoos and then you go your whoa, 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 and you <laughs> that's how you that, that's how I do bands. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I just summed it up. Uh, so how so how long is it before Sick Bay comes in the picture then? Well, um, like 99, 99 we okay. Sick Bay. And I had been friends with Dave Herb uh, for years before that. And we'd always hung out. And he, you know, he, now here's where it gets kind of like, I'd always been a fan of, um, kind of melodic punk rock for lack of a better term but things like x was a huge huge band the band x not the x although i like them um, <laughs> the x are also great but they're very different from the band x. yeah yeah so dave and i would always hang out and and you know like the weirdos and x and a lot of the like la bands yeah. we were really big fans of that whereas the diddly diddly guys the jazz guys, they weren't such big fans of like that kind of punk stuff. Yeah. But Dave and I will propose the idea. Well, why, don't we, why don't we play together? Because, you know, and we'll just do kind of more of that. And I felt like that was also more genuine to my taste. You know, like I love the undertones. I love the buzzcocks. I love. Yeah, absolutely. But, it, you know, I wanted to be a little bit more like, like, Fuck it, I want to play melodic uh, melodically. <clears throat> so that's kind of how that happened. I mean, Dave and I were really like best friends, you know, for years. And we approached it, or I approached the band of like, let's just be really good friends and figure out the music after that. Yeah. We can we can instead of like picking people based on their abilities or or um you know. I, I not that I did that with those guys, but but yeah, like let's just be let's just be friends and figure out the music later. And the, as long as we can, we like a lot of cool same stuff. I don't know. It was just a little. It was a different approach. It was like more fun rather than having some hell bent agenda on pushing the envelope. And uh, <laughs> so there we go. Sure. That's how that's how that band started. And um, it was it was the it was different. I mean, I, I could tell there were some people that knew my other bands that were just couldn't like, mm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to get off. the. I don't I don't really this isn't doing much for me. And it was a, I could tell and it was a little bit of a. Oh well, I'm having fun, and I really like this, and it's it's kind of a it 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 um, addresses other parts of my musical taste that I had never. Sure. You know, I'm not all about aggro, weird, angular, mathy stuff. You know, I like I love I love me some Rosillos and undertones, you know, and things like that. Well, I mean, and I feel like an, another band that maybe people. I certainly thought of them uh, with Sick Bay was Minutemen too. Which, oh yeah, I you know like them. yeah, Dave loved them too. Uh, you know, and Volcano Sons. Like, there, there's definitely like, uh, I mean, it's. I think yeah, it's we were. Go oh, ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I, I was just gonna say that like because everything was like uber proggy before. No, they were like, I really got down like like. Like I used to in the late '90s, things I actually used to listen to, like were "Built to Spill," 
Archers of Loaf, Guided yeah. by Voices, Sebado, like straight up pavement, you know, it, like what you call indie rock. But that was really what I listened to, like for real. And in fact, I just listened to All the Nations Airports at Archers of Loaf yesterday. Ah, and it, okay. brought, it brought it brought tears to my eyes. I it's, love it's that. Such a great record, yeah. No, I and, I, record. and I did think, like, why am I not addressing this? Like, why don't I be in a band that's kind of that's the kind of shit I listen to, you know, for the most part. It's what I grab, like, just that, just to have fun listening to music. That's, I tend to go for that stuff. I still do. I mean, I still, <coughs> don't get me wrong. I love, I love the new Off album with all my heart. Um, sure. But, but man, I love, I love so much like that. Have you heard the new Oneida album, that Success? No, I heard one. it. I heard it's oh really good. Oh my god! There, I mean, just as an, ex it's really melodic. It's very like, kind of gnarly punk. You know, it's like yeah, that, yeah, fuck yeah, that kind of stuff, like garagey. Um, but I, I, don't I, know, I think that's where that comes from. Is like this sick bay was just sort of like, okay, let's do something like that, and uh, that's what that's what happened. Yeah, I, I would love to have. Um... Like Kid Millions on this show, and someone just put that on the universe Ooh. right now. Because that's a, and that's a band that like they have done some incredible things and incredibly different things. Like, oh my like, god, yeah. I mean, Sheets of Easter alone, where it's like, wow. I was gonna say, I saw them in the, I saw them at live at the Seventh Street <laughs> Entry. I did not know about that song, and it was like the guy that I don't know their names. The organ player guy. The song's called "Sheets of Easter." Sheets of Easter. I'm like, oh yeah. okay. Light, light, light. light. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm know. like, holy like, fuck! How long has this been going on? Yeah, <laughs> but I can't leave. I can't leave. <laughs> but it's so compelling, yeah. And that's mm -hmm. uh, you know, and props to them for doing that. And like that, that's not the only crayon in their crayon box necessarily. But yeah, what what an interesting band. And, and also, like, I don't know. I I get kind of. I it gets my hackles up when people get real attached to somebody being like oh it's so and so of this genre of music it's like well they can play other things mm -hmm. you know that they can play other things and that's okay right like it's and it's you know that whole yeah. genre trader thing i think metalheads are probably the worst at that frankly about you know sit there and parse what is and is not metal all day long while you know none of them get laid but anyway yeah well <laughs> that, i i have run into a fair not a fair amount of it, but definitely run into that because, you know, when you s set up a tour or, um, or have a new record out, the person trying to sell the band <coughs> would always have to say is Nick from Dazzling Kilman. And I can just see yep. the disappointment, mm -hmm. how it wasn't dazzling. It was like, Oh, this is not like I expected. And it's like, God, I don't know. I get that. It's just like not a, not that different, but geez. And so, well, it'd be nice if people can let go of that and just let it be its own thing. But that is not people operate though. Mm -hmm. And I really, you know, I'm running into that. It's a to get kind of psychological and personal. I mean, in upright forms to bring it back. When I when me and Sean started this band last December. Sean from the Great Mize on Place. I know them from way yes. back when. So. And Sean is friends with you, I, I, yep. I am told. Right. And, uh, Upright and Forms strange, is, a, is a strange tale of three people I know from three completely different bands and circles playing together. And mm -hmm. I think that's amazing. That's, that's happened a couple other times before, but it's not about me. So tell me, yeah, tell me about how that well, came this is this is sharing something, you know, kind of private, I thought. I think. I'm not sure. Ah, fuck it. I'll share it. I, it's dealing with people's, it's like what we're talking about, people's expectations and me being kind of a people pleaser person and knowing that and what would I want this band to sound like? And, and I also want the band to be a democracy and Noah, the bass player has written songs <clears throat> that are pretty mellow and I like them a lot, but I can feel my brain going like, well, what would the Dazzling Killman fan think? You know, it's like I have all these, like, and it's really embarrassing to say that because I, 
yeah, I don't want to disappoint people, but at the same time, I guess, I don't know, do I guess all our art people think that? Like they, you know, they want approval. They want people to go, yeah, that's good. And, uh, but act to be, I don't know. It's just, uh, I, I want this band also to have a different sort of approach in that very, de very democratic and um, not feel like I owe fans of any other band I was in any, anything. And uh, it's, it's turning out, it's turning out, you know, what's strange is like, I, and I didn't expect this, this band, has sort of this DC set hardcore sound. I could, I could totally hear that. Yeah. And I had never in my wildest dreams would have expected that, but, but it's just, this what's like rising to the top. Like what the like hell? Early like, top box almost. Yeah. Yeah. It's like something yeah. like, I like Every that issue. stuff, but it's not something that has ever been like on the forefront of my listening. It's just, I think just the us three playing together. That's how, all the ingredients like that's how the thing we're baking tastes you know or whatever it's just so and i and i wonder just let it let it do its thing stand back and just watch it form like that yeah. i think that's the best way to do it that's the honest way and not try to no oh, it's got to be a little more scrapier and noisier and angst ridden you know because that's kind of People have liked like my old bands that sound like that. Like because I really I, I struggle with it. I struggle. There's what? a resurgence because there's a resurgence of that now. And <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of a noise uh, buzz and a noise rock. I, I see, wow. but I, I look. I, I, mean, I don't know. You're talking, you're talking to a guy like Replicator was too late for the '90s and too soon for the noise rock revival, and I'm like, oh great, I don't even play the genre of music anymore. I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but man, I I, I um miss, miss the boat both times. <laughs> damn it, Conan. <laughs> uh, but I mean, whatever. Like, I mean, it's it's all about like I you know whatever you guys do, and it's gonna ideally it's gonna sound like you anyway. People it's seem cute. to really like it, and that's I, like cool. I, 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 I like it. I have fun as hell playing it, and I I like the way we've recorded five songs, um, mixed three. We recorded recently a Jesus Lizard cover for an, our Italian friend Manuel Vignani. Yep. Um, are you guys going to be on that? If we can get around to recording it. <laughs> oh, okay. We actually did it. We did a, our version of Seasick, and it's pretty freaking noise rock. I'll tell you that. It's it's it kind of like I thought we already missed the window. Let it all out. No. The yeah. slobbering yabba do. My I do a bit <laughs> yeah. of a David Yao imitation, but. Throw some Nick Sakes in there too, but yeah, it's it's well the first. So it's just well, kind of like I don't know. We're still figuring it out. We're we're trying to let it evolve naturally and not try to have any kind of preconceived notion of like this is a noise rock band and we yeah, yeah. need to make it more of a noise rock band. It's it's but the it sounds more I DC of, than anything. The first thing I thought of when I heard of Upright Forms being you three guys, I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting. I wonder exactly what that's going to sound like. Because I've Me played too. shows with the other guys. I have, I've never played a show with you, I don't think. But like, uh, well, pre catterwall But uh, the, <laughs> but it was, you know, I was like, oh, this is cool. Right on. Like, like I, But I knew it was like, oh, that's going to be good, whatever it is. Oh, <laughs> like, however, however that turns out. Because all three of you guys are very interesting and unique players, but not necessarily like ones that are... <laughs> you know the, the 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 same the same suite of cards in the deck uh yeah uh, but like i i like that that's some of my favorite bands are like that and you know the only thing like like savak was sort of the same way in um i think they're based out of new york now where it was um so rob from edsel and and my friend michael jaworski from the cops and virgin islands where it's like wow i would never think of those guys playing together but that's really awesome mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a great combination so I mean I'm I'm just I'm excited I think the song on the oh yeah so let's talk about the comp the yeah. which we brought up an hour ago uh, mm -hmm. but brand brand new um, yeah you know we're gonna we're, we're gonna have a video rolling out next week too it's just kind of getting set up um, Mark Fisher skin graft who I'm still working with right for all these years like, like <laughs> back in ninety. Yep. 32 years later, we're still emailing, still pals. 
If it ain't um, broke. Yeah. Oh, it, uh, we're, so it's, it's a yeah, cool video. It's, it's, we're really excited about this. We made this video with a friend of ours, Chris Johnson, and uh, he's a great artist. And it's the first time I've worked on a, 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 a true music video. Like I kind of helped really? put it wow. together. And it's fun. It's really, I mean, I didn't do the technical editing, but I, I kind of took, you know, collected a lot of the shots and, and had like, Hey, can we do this and that? And so I directed it. It was really, I'm really proud of it. So next week you'll hear about it hopefully. But that song is so funny. We, uh, with that song, we wrote that song and, uh, I don't know why that chorus popped into my head. They kept, it sounded, it just seemed like it had this kind of cheesy, almost uber rock chorus. So like, all right, let's just go full on uber fist pumping chorus. And that came I'm out. And then, and then when we sent it to Mark, he's like, Oh man, this is gonna be great! It's like zombies. Like they kept on like, what? Wow! I never, I never even made that connection. Like so, yeah, yeah, it's a zombie song, sure. Yeah, yeah there you go. So yeah, uh, yeah that's <laughs> it. And um, but yeah, it's 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 fun. Well, and it's a yeah. really cool comp too. I mean, there's Bobby Khan, Flying Lutenbachers on there. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. John, John Forbes. Um, you uh, want Hercules? You want a Hercules? Thank you. Uh, and David Yao singing with Yowie, with Yowie, which is great from a consensual yeah. standpoint. I never, why I had never put the, that together until like, <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Uh, and ter speaking of Yowie, terms, which is yep. Chris, Chris from Yowie. USA Nails is on there. <clears throat> mm -hmm. on and the Psychic Graveyard, who I absolutely adore. And can I say cunt roaches on this show? Because oops, I just did a new yeah. a new kid on the skin graph block, or yeah. our new German pals so who just came out with a pretty insane eight minute Halloween style video. It's a very audio. Ear, ear catching name for sure. Yes. It took me that was a way homer too. It took me a while. Like, oh cockroaches. Okay. Like it, it did not it did not occur to me until like days after that, I heard their name. Uh, I'll, <coughs> I'll, I'll throw a link to the to it in the show notes for yeah, cool, the thank show. you. But yeah, it's called "Sounds to Make You Shudder," mm -hmm. and uh, you can find it wherever you find your find, find yes. Your stuff. Let's get find com. <laughs> There's a band. It's on, it's on okay. Spotify and all that jazz. Yeah. It's on, all the, it's on all the things. But there's a skincraftrecords.bandcamp.com. A lot of folks in this show patronize Bandcamp. Uh, it's also Bandcamp Friday tomorrow at the time of this recording. So hint, hint, hint. There's a lot of Bandcamp Fridays. I, I actually buy a fair amount from Bandcamp these days. I love, band, love Bandcamp. I, I love it as well. It's, I'm putting up some t-shirts tomorrow. <laughs> is there has there any been any sort of negative repercussions by the the buy the buying of Bandcamp by the, some evil overlord or something like? Uh, didn't someone like some baker fish buy the litter? Yeah, the litter it, was, sort of thing? It, was, it was bought by um, some video game. Yeah, thing. no, like, no disaster has happened yet. Epic, I think, is, is like Epic Games. Yeah, Epic Games. Uh, and I just, I don't know anything about video games. So I was like, okay, what does that mean? Are they going to ruin it? It means Galaga. That's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, That's my I, video game, Galaga. I think That's all. I think they're behind uh, Fortnite, if I, if I remember right. Oh, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fortnite, which didn't sound, I don't know, if you're going to have an evil overlord company, it doesn't sound that terrible, I guess. At least it wasn't. You know, Taco Bell or something, or Pepsi. <laughs> I guess Pepsi was Taco Bell. Yeah, Taco Bell Bandcamp is what it is. Now. Actually, actually, <laughs> Bandcamp think, brought to you by Taco Bell. I, I and think State Farm Insurance brings I, you. <laughs> Pepsi, I think, owns Taco Bell and KFC. If I'm oh right. yeah, they do. There's a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, uh, PepsiCo. Yep. <laughs> <The> Pepsi <laughs> Pepsi Go Band Camp. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. now now we're just doing idiocracy bits. But no, as far as I know, it it hasn't really changed. It, it doesn't seem like it's changed the. Um, That's cool. Uh, the the fundamental nature of it being an artist friendly pl platform. Well, well, eventually we're going to have something. We're well, we really since 
things have kind of shot, you know, done, done really like taken their own. Like we've been doing real well in the t little 10 month time we've been a band. Uh, but we need to write more songs. I think we just yeah. now is the time, like, okay, we've. Well, May was your first show. Yeah. Right? We and have, <laughs> we have like six or seven solid songs. Like, yeah. I would like to have. Well, you know, just to be able to write a set list and choose which, you know, from a list and not play certain ones or like, yeah, but, um, but yeah, it's the, the new stuff. We got a couple that are I'm really excited about It's We're kind of figuring out how to drive them, drive the car here. So sort just of, yeah. make work the machine. So it's going to, it's, it's starting to get really cool. We're figuring out how to play with each other and know know how to work it um and that that is also a good thing because i i like collectively creating something um not to disparage my other bandmates or bands but those guys would have entire songs complete and come to practice and said you're going to play this and this guy's going to play this and this yeah. is how this sounds that's all. And it was you generally I trusted them and it did sound really cool. It was fun to kind of realize it, but it was composed. I mean, it, I was in a band with composers and they like to compose, but it wasn't totally satisfying for me. And this is a much more uh, satisfying situation to be to do things collectively. It's more but, of a collaborative effort. It's, it's yeah. Of, yeah, it's a little it's a you know, it's 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 new to me it's new to me and it feels a little sometimes a little scary um yeah. but but i'm but i'm liking it i like you know we we get along great as people we're friends we text each other about life stuff all the time and hang out it's going real well yeah cool. well, and i'm excited to see uh what you guys get up to next for sure uh but it's it's just interesting that you know, I, th I think you're you're well poised for people to kind of take it on at, for what it is at face value because you know, I mean, even just with this show when I announced that you're on, a bunch of people were like, "Oh, that's awesome, fantastic!" You know, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was nice. And you know, it's it's been a, it's been a little bit. You know, it, it's it's been um, well. When did when did your last band break up? It was it was like like four or five I'm, years ago. I'm gonna go. Where is it? I'm gonna go it's get. Some, kind of I'm gonna go good. get something off. I'll be right off the wall. I'll be one second. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Of course, talking with uh, Mr. Nick Sakes of Upright Forms, Dazzling Kilman, Colossomite, Sick Bay, and of course, there's one band we haven't mentioned. There. Oh, look at that! <laughs> oh my God, I forgot we were we were gonna that. You okay? So for for the audience, that, that was good. That was gonna be the last. Oh my God. <laughs> That was the night before everything. That closed. was the night. So okay. So uh, so for the audio listeners, especially, what Nick just said is, is pull a, a fantastic Dale Flatham poster. Let me let me highlight this. Uh, fantastic Dale Flatham poster of a show uh, at Mortimer's Friday, March thirteenth. What year was that, Nick? <coughs> twenty twenty. <laughs> and uh, a little something happened uh, that that week. Uh, the S next day, First <laughs> Avenue closed, and we decided we didn't want to play the show because adam had just had a baby and we were yep. kind of freaked out like yeah no we sorry we just thought it was going to be over a couple of weeks you no, know? Remember, no, that's what those days? <laughs> so so we were driving up from wisconsin and on, on about an hour out from minneapolis the governor gives a hey everybody stay home order <laughs> no, that ain't good uh, so Novacron play. So what, what? Of course, on the flyer, uh, the, the reason why that's funny is it's Sick Bay, Novacron, and uh, Kona Neutron, the Secret Friends, and that was the second date of a like fifteen day tour, I think, for us. Okay. And at that point, we had already like canceled the West Coast because Seattle was like it was like okay, we can't. I mean, Seattle was like the linchpin show. It was like yeah, that's nobody feels good about. It. That was like the center of COVID. 
basically. Yeah. So we ended up playing Minneapolis. Oh, right. It started, and, started in LA on that cruise ship and all that weird stuff. So that was that was a crazy time to be alive, but even more crazier time to be on tour because we basically got through two shows and then we're like, okay, I guess we're just heading back and that's everything is canceled and that's probably for the best. And yeah. I guess we'll see. oh no, what are we gonna do? We're not like we're gonna have to rebook all this stuff after, after this is over in a few weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, I love this. Years Here later. I am. It's a great but flyer. I love this thing. It was like the flyer that I, I don't know why I'm holding it up like I'm on. You know, it, it, it's the best. Well, for most people, you know, for people on their video, it's it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, uh, that is cool. a great, great. We should re say we should redo that show at this point, but I think we Paul should redo a reenactment. We should be show <laughs> reenactors. <laughs> well, Paul Paul lives in Seattle now. They seems to come back and play for freaking hammerhead shows often enough. Also Paul lives up. here. Paul he, he's, lives. he was I think he moved to Seattle for a little bit. He's back because he we back? just play, we just played with Vaz last week. Oh, he's living. Go. He lives here. So, Hammerhead yeah. played a couple weeks ago. It's weird. I keep thinking you live here. I saw, I, sometimes I feel like you live, do. Yeah. you're a computer people. You live in a computer, and I live <laughs> yeah, in a computer. Exactly. We're computer people. I was gonna say we could just we'll just substitute. We'll have a uh, Dale like scratch out sick bay and put upright forms instead, and we'll just redo. <laughs> like, can we just redo that? Uh -oh. <laughs> redo that show. <laughs> we never broke up. We just kind of never played again. Well, so <laughs> that's so. But I, I mean, that's meant to be a joke. But like, yeah, like is sick bay round two over? Like, I, you know, in these days of hiatus, infinite hiatuses, I I don't know. I mean. We we kept thinking we were like, should we play together, guys? Can we do it? Because you know we were practicing for that show. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, I still love those guys. Or I still, I still see them once in a while. They're total high five, best buddy kind of vibes going on. Yeah. So I don't know. Is this any? Does anyone have the time? Um, but there's no no problem with with maybe doing that again someday. I love being a singer. I love that's the first time I had ever like to quit a band like like I said I'm just gonna sing now with not play guitar. Oh yeah. my god, I loved it. It was like I can jump around, I can do stuff like moves. <laughs> we can have it moves practice. You up. Yeah. yeah, it was so that's much fun. I would totally get into that again. Just to be the the front man. What, and so, so, how did how did Sick Bay sort of round two start up? Was it just like, hey, um, that, that actually? I was living out in New York, um, and doing Zadex with my then wife, yeah. and I, Tom Loftus, uh, and wanted to do a reissue of vinyl of Firelit Scoffs on Modern Radio, and if we do, we would you guys play a show at the entry? Yeah. You're like, well. I don't know how we'd practice. I live out here. But what if we got Adam, like, or somebody to play my parts? Because we knew he could do it. He's really good. And he was a big fan of our band. And he just said, hell yeah, I'll do it. So I flew. they practiced. I flew in. And we played that show. And I was just the singer. Yeah. Like, I, it was great. I loved it. So that became the band. We're like, Adam fit right in because we just got along like gangbusters. So we became a four piece just out of necessity, just because that for that one show, but it, it felt so good. It was so much fun. Well, yeah, and that's that's such an interesting an interesting way of going about it where it's like, oh no, it's it's kind of added on a person and like you switch to just singing, but why not? I mean it still sounded you know, mm -hmm. like still still sounded like you guys. Like it didn't sound like it was like like you, you got yeah. that um uh yeah like it's you, 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 it's got the same vibes you know even mm -hmm. if it's not exactly exactly the same so yeah he used to play in the band stunning adam yeah we, who are great yeah. yeah much missed yes yes indeed it's a shame uh seeing that band broke up but i get it it's, it's, yeah. it's being a long-lived band ain't all it's cracked up to be <laughs> <laughs> well, Sick Bay had a pretty good run. We were a band for yeah, a while. 2000, I mean, we're, I, we're not over, you know, 15 years or something. We, yeah, we, yeah. Toured, we toured Europe. 
three albums. Like that's a good, it's a good band. A nice healthy band life. Yeah, I think. Well, I guess. Well, if you want, if I you should, want, if you want uh, to redo, if you want to redo that show, I'm I'm still down. <laughs> we already got the I'll, flyer. I'll keep it. I'll keep you. <laughs> Did he put the year on it? Maybe we could re make you redo it next year. <laughs> no, but I know we, it seems so, so, so hilarious. famous. Twenty twenty, <laughs> hindsight is twenty twenty. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Well, Nick, it's been it's been so great having you on the show, man. Thanks so much for doing it. It's um, uh, yeah, it's been really really fun. I'm excited for uh, all things upright forms. Excited to see whatever you guys come up with next. Uh, I think so. Right now, there's there's just there's a skin graft comp that we they brought up i'll put that in the show notes uh any other upright there's there's an instagram so <laughs> yeah there was a there was a twitter but i nuked it because of freaking elon musk <laughs> i'm like I, I nobody looks at our twitter account anyway I'm like get rid of this thing unless we, you're have, a, we have a facebook page but i quit facebook so we do have a facebook page also but i quit facebook yeah well because of, of the the weird politics stuff. It's, 2020 it's, burned me on that too. It's it's all it's all garbage. Yeah. <laughs> to, to to be explicitly clear, it's all it's all garbage. And we're having a new the the our new uh, video premiere next week, which uh, hey, I will definitely announce that when yeah, I yeah. can. It's all sort of come together today, and it isn't uh, set in stone, but it's going to be fun. All right. So depending on when folks uh, watch or listen to this, it'll either already have happened or it'll be happening in the immediate future, <laughs> which is always fun. Might, might happen late next week. That's all yeah. I can say. I'm either looking forward to it or it was great. One or the other. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, last last thing, Nick. Um, can question. Only question I ever ask. You can choose to interpret it however you like. Why do you do what you do? Because I can't help it. I don't know. I, I try to stop, but my my body starts doing it again. I don't know. It does feel like that. I got music feet. My feet start walking to the guitar and the practice space. It's like I, can, I just can't help it. It's in me blood. Well, I for one am glad that it is, and I look forward to uh, whatever's next, my man. All right. Thanks a lot, Conan. Thanks so much, brother. Take care. Good day. Oh, there he goes, Mr. Nick Sakes. Uh, what a cool guy. That was awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let's hear this is the song, Upright Form song on uh, is They Kept Living. It's on the Sounds to Make You Shudder compilation. So, again, this will be in the show notes for everyone uh, that wants to uh, check it out. It's a great compilation. Uh, I think I'm going to be talking to John Forbes from Mount Shasta and Tijuana Hercules pretty soon about it too. Uh, great stuff. Here is Upright Forms. Yonder. What? 
place of birth and death. They can't stop loving. They can't stop loving. They can't stop loving. They can't stop loving. Upright Forms, they kept on living. That is on the now classic skin, skin Graph Records presents Sounds to Make You Shudder compilation. Look for that, skingraphrecords.bandcamp.com. And uh, find that in, uh, I don't know, wherever you, wherever you find your stuff, wherever you find your skins, skin graft stuff. Oh, my God, I'm having a hard time talking right now. All right, we heard a... We heard a new one. Let's hear a uh, let's hear an old one. This is Dazzling Kilman. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, there you go. That was a little Dazzling Kilman uh, for you. Lacerations. And, hey, thanks so much for uh, tuning into the show. Of course, this this has been episode one, uh, 110, good Lord, 310, <laughs> with Nick Sakes of Upright Forms, Colossomite, Dazzling Kilman, Sick Bay, Zadax. I didn't put Zadax on the... When it gets it, look, like two lines is enough. It's enough, isn't it? We also didn't talk about Zadix at all, uh, except for like thirty seconds. But so great to have Nick on. Hope you guys enjoyed that. No, I did. The name of the show, of course, is Kono Neutrons Protonic Reversal. Thank you so very, very much for listening to it. This show airs Thursdays, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific on Radio Nope, RadioNope.com. Say yes to Nope. Also, YouTube, Twitch, sometimes Facebook when I'm feeling ornery. Uh, but uh, yeah, you, the important thing is you can find this show on the internet as well as. ProtonicReversal.com, always free, no ads, no sponsors, no kidding. But if you do like the show and want to get episodes sooner, $1 a month, Patreon.com slash ProtonicReversal will achieve that goal easily. It also helps you uh, helps the show out as well. Of course, if you like the show, or even just a single episode, you can uh, like, share, post a review, uh, you know, 
It sounds cheeseball, but it helps people find the show. Helps helps in the algorithm, which we all submit to. It's also just a darn nice thing to do. A bunch of good stuff coming up. Uh, we have we have some cool episodes. John Schmerzel from Brainiacs coming up. Uh, yeah, there, there, there's a bunch of stuff. Thanks for listening. Can you hear me now? Stay safe out there. Out on Route 128. Check you later. I got my radio on. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? to my top 10. I'd like to thank our sponsor. But we haven't got a sponsor. Not if you were the last man on earth. She was prepared to prove it. This one goes out to a special girl. There is no special girl! It's the, it's the end of radio. The last announcer plays the last record. The last what? Leaves the transmitter. Circles the globe in search of a listener. Can you hear me now? broadcasting if there's no one there to receive it's the end of radio as we come to the close of our broadcast day
past. If this had been a real emergency, hey, hey.